Hey guys, I got a little project here from the Gaelic Wolfling, and he sent me a letter here, and you don't need to read all that, but the important part is, well, he's got a quote here I just absolutely love. He says he got into locks because he was very uncomfortable with faith-based security. I think, I'm going to steal that quote. That's a fantastic way of thinking about it. But the closing line on, us, on this is, P.S., to the NSA agents reading this, there's a hidden message. I bet you cannot find it. And when I got this, they apparently had already broken the message, and they, you can see where they... Anyway, it says, the secret message is, I sell pickled lemmings. So we got, we got several puzzles in one here. Anyway, back to, the, back to the lock puzzle. This is something I might know a little bit about. Uh, this is a kryptonite keeper, and it's brand new out of the package, and uh, I think uh, Gaelic Wolfling probably took the chain off of it, but normally there's a chain made of this high magnesium, very high quality, hardened steel, and it, it just extends around, and then it plunges into this opening here. A couple of things about this, and uh, Gaelic Wolfling pointed it out, is that they made special note in the instructions. Make sure you insert the key all the way to the bottom, and they did it in four different languages to make sure that we don't screw that up. And I, of course I had to find out why. And first of all it tells me that because they insist that we stick the key all the way to the bottom, that tells me it's probably got tension from the bottom. It's kind of difficult, it's not a real good fit. Let's see if we can get it to cooperate here. Even in the best of times it doesn't want to cooperate. Let's try the other key. There we go, finally. So it does work. It's not so smooth what you'd expect from a new lock, but they really want you to make sure you get that key down to that last disc, which is where the tension is applied to this lock. So right away, we know we're going to have a little bit of pain uh, picking this lock. So I thought, okay, I got a bottom, move this out of the way here, I got a bottom the keyway tool. So I pulled out my very expensive granite pick, which is a bottom of the keyway. And I stuck it in there. I'm not, not going to do it now, but I tried to stick it in. And there's a profile disc on the very end. And you can't see it because of the darkness of the hole. But the profile disc, and it's only one, has a figure eight. You can see the key has a groove on both sides. So my rectangular tip from my tool was not going to go in there until I took a file to it. If we can get it to focus. And I just kind of filed a groove so that it does go in there, and I was able to get it in and begin picking this thing. Or that's what I thought anyway. Turns out that even when you're tensioning it correctly, the discs inside of here spin 360 degrees. There's no resistance whatsoever. Most locks, like the Abloy and the Granite and all those, they rotate about 90 degrees. The Abuses, they go 90 degrees. And you can feel the disc riding on the sidebar, and that's kind of giving you your clue. You can feel it click when you hit a false gate or when you hit the real gate. So there's some kind of feedback. In this one, I don't believe there's a sidebar. So these discs consequently rotate completely around with no resistance, no feedback whatsoever, 360 degrees, and you can turn it as long as you want. So I wasted my time modifying this tool, and now we got to reject it. Now we go back to other means. And just so you know how this works, I have a chain here. Let's see if I can go through the magic of getting the key properly installed again. This is not the right chain, obviously, but it simply goes in the top here, then you lock it, and then this, of course, is going to be fastened there. You can wrap, secure your bike. That's how she works. All right, let's find another way to get in this thing. Let's take a look at it a little closer here, figure out another way. Uh, let's start with the least destructive first. The first thing I'd like to do is remove the outer cover. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Okay, we got a piece of hardened tubular steel, looks like, and you can see how that fits in there. I don't think we're going to be removing that unless we punch out that roll pin. We might try that a little bit later, see what happens. But we want to focus on attacking the lock, I suppose. Hardened steel, once this chain is inside of there, we won't have access to this opening. So we really only have two ways to attack this. Let me clamp this up, and let's try the least destructive first. Let's try to drive out that roll pin. 
All right, guys, right away I can see we have a potential obstacle. This roll pin, there's a hole on this side, but there's no hole on the other side. So if kryptonite was smart, that pin is almost the entire length of this chamber. They drove it in there. There's no way to continue driving it the rest of the way. But let's try it first. Maybe it'll be a very short pin, and we can just continue to drive it all the way through. Alright guys, I've driven that pin about as far as I'm going to go. I think I have to assume the length of that pin probably is the same width as this tube. So, round one goes to kryptonite. But what I'd like to try next, I've got a pry bar here. Let me really torque down this vise. And what I'm going to try to do now is just put some torque on this. Now remember, this is in a vise. This is not on a bike, so you can't go crazy. But I'm going to, this is about a 18 inch pry bar. And I'm just going to try to work this link loose. Perhaps we can break that roll pin and allow us simply to pull this chain link out. And it's not acting like... Let me hit the button. I don't think we're going to get in there, fellas. All right, got this thing clamped up. The uh, lock still works. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and simulate putting in the locking chain. And it's a little bit stiff, but still works perfectly. There we go. And now I'm going to have to clamp this just a bit more. So it doesn't slide out, because this next technique, totally destructive. We have a basically a, a quarter inch piece of tool still that I've put into this socket. And we're going to insert this into the keyhole. I'm going to knock it all the way to the back. In fact, let me just go ahead and do that. This is destructive, so there's no sense in being gentle with it. Okay, I'm just going to put a socket on it now and see if we can torque this thing open. It doesn't act like she wants to give. I think we're going to break the tool steel, guys. Here we go. A lot of torque went on that, believe me. So, I've got to say, kryptonite. You guys got a pretty good product here. I don't know what to tell you. Um, aside from physically attacking and slicing this outer sheath, I don't know how to get into this thing. All right, guys, we're back at square one. Because I was dumb enough to put that chain in there, I couldn't get, I couldn't slide the sleeve off. <laughs> so I had to cut the chain, hoping that would do it, and I still couldn't get it. So I had to use a grinder to grind a groove in the sleeve so we could slide it back off. So we're back where we started before we tried the core twisting technique. So now we're back to this pin. We've already screwed up the core. Let's see if we can do something with this pin, see what happens. All right, let's give this a shot. Got this thing clamped in pretty well. All right, that's about as far as that pin's gonna go. Let's try. All right, I'm gonna try to twist this thing out of here. Oh well, I was trying to pull the core straight up. Alright, let's find another way to get that core out. Alright fellas, I've tried everything in the quiver trying to get that core out, so now it's just going to become more of an autopsy. This may take a while, this uh, entire sleeve here, almost a quarter of an inch thick, uh, is probably going to take a while to go through with a grinder. So let me get at it. Alright, let's let this thing cool down. 
All right, fellas. <laughs> what an ordeal. Let's take a look at what we've done here. The first thing that we decided to do is cut the cover off. That was the right decision because that exposed the outer sleeve. The outer sleeve, when we punched that pin, miraculously, the outer sleeve gen then came off and then exposed the heavy steel inner case. And that's this. And by the way, all of this is hardened steel. I don't mean lightly hardened either. This is some seriously hardened steel. So, it exposed this quarter inch thick housing. Well then we decided to try to attack this to remove this link. So find some way to release that. We tried driving in the pin, but on the other side of course, the other side of this housing prevented the pin from coming out. And if you take a look, they've thought about it. If you look closely at this, there are actually two pins. We have the pin we tried to drive out, which is right there, which didn't work out so well for us. And then there's this heavy other pin which went all the way through the housing, so there was no way to completely drive it through. Even if we could, this thing might still be in place and this uh, rounded part, this part, fills the inside of the link, so we still probably wouldn't be able to pull that out as long as one or both of those pins were in there. So we're not going to get a release from that side. Well then comes the other side. Now remember, if this had been a lock, uh, if the chain had been locked in here, even if we had pushed this pin out, we would not have been able to remove this outer sleeve because the link would have protruded through this hole like that and prevented the sleeve from coming off. But again, just go with the program. We're just doing an autopsy at this point. All right, we've come all the way down to this part. Now, when I finally get the lock itself out, the part that we've so desperately tried to get access to, you'll find it's still inside of a basically an armored steel uh, container and this plugs directly into the back of the actuator and there's the actuator right there so now we gotta find a way to get into this dude to see what these discs look like we've already driven that pin in so I'm probably just gonna have to pop this off and see where it goes give me a minute all right, fellas, really made a mess of this. There's not a heck of a lot I can do about it, though, because this, uh, the entire lock, the guts, were hydraulically pressed into this core. So the only way to get it out is to, well, use a little bit of violence. Uh, and that violence, of course, involved driving the pins out from the other side. No other way around it. Ended up breaking most of them, but what I can tell you is that these are not soft metal. They are pretty hard steel which would explain why we weren't able to force it. The other thing I can tell you is that there are two steel... Let me grab three pieces here. These copper pieces, by the way, are the spacers. A couple interesting things here. First is these two outer shells go into the core and they are also are made from steel. Now you can see how much torque we put on it when we tried to twist this lock open and they did not fail. So they're both pretty well intact. The other thing I was interested to discover is this small piece because it fits right down, I don't know if you can see it there, but it fits into this groove and it, that is the sidebar. So in fact this lock does contain a sidebar but it's held in place by steel discs and these steel sleeves. So the chances of compressing the, all of this steel in such a tight space just obviously isn't possible. Anyway fellas, sorry for mangling this thing up, but I think we learned an important thing and that is the new kryptonite, we're not going to open it with a big pen. And uh, I gotta tell you, Gaelic Wolfling, thank you for the lock, and I gotta tell you, if this is a 5 for kryptonite, I don't want to have to face a 10. These are tough. Thanks for your time. Stay safe. And fellas, stay legal.